but that's it. Now we'll do a little Q and A and we'll answer all your questions from there. All right, let's do this. Jarky, if you have a Bitcoin miner, just connect electricity to the street grid and you don't pay. <laughs> you don't get to pay electricity again. Yeah. You know, like when in Puerto Rico, you have the, the, uh, the uh, favelas uh, down there by old San Juan, which is where Protechos builds all their, all their uh, roofs for free. And uh, they just connect to the grid and no one stops them. Uh, Luma comes down and says, hey, you shouldn't do that. Like, do you want to get your head beat in? then just leave us alone. So yeah, you can do that. I've seen a lot of cool videos and pictures of people heating their entire house with Bitcoin miners. I thought that was pretty smart. Ah, Crypto Keeper. Long time no see. I'll put him as well. Uh, could be 50. Yeah, I agree with me. I'm not sure about the mining company. They may have too much debt. Uh, but the machines themselves, another question. Yeah, machines themselves work out pretty well. But again, the, the thing with technology and Bitcoin miners is that there's always a new one coming out that is more efficient, that can make you more. And then, of course, the old ones become obsolete. I just find Bitcoin mining an extremely tough industry to be in. And when people talk about how easy it is to make funds, look, I got a friend, we'll call him Pete, and he's been in Bitcoin mining forever and was talking to me about how great it is. And he asked me for a loan because the uh, different, different factors that, that uh, cause things to collapse. So I'm just like, well, it's a good thing I got this real estate. Works out pretty well. Ah, Sin City Crypto, possible for a BIP. Bitcoin improvement pros will intend to spread out hash rates so a small guy can get a Bitcoin reward. No, Sin Cities, let those guys die. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be up to the community. Mr. K, what did I miss? Uh, Riot Blockchain's doing pretty good. Bitcoin miners still keeping their head above water. Strong will survive. Thunderdome, that's about it. Oh, do some wash trading. I mean, uh, tax loss harvesting before it's too late. You got three days. Jordan's in that. I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it never ceases to amaze me. And I get it. Like there are some entertaining people in, in the crypto world that, uh, but they don't really do much. You know, they don't really, it's all, I don't know. It's all hype and stuff like that. But uh, like Jordan and his channel is fantastic. I mean, uh, this guy He's been dealing with, in real estate, selling over a billion dollars, getting involved in over a billion dollars with the real estate when he was in his 20s. Now, of course, he's, I think he's just hitting around 40. He's a young kid. <laughs> and uh, he's got a lot of information to, to share. The problem is, is he's not very hypey. He's not very sensationalistic. So I just try to bring attention to his channel. I think it's a good channel. That's it. <laughs> Drake says, you're wrong, Rob. Just use VPN. Ban crypto is like banning a cow giving her milk. It's not possible. That's a good point. You can just use a VPN. I got a VPN now, and you can do a lot of things with it. The only thing is that which this is it, which because I've heard of these stories, and it only takes once. People would connect to Binance International, not Binance US, who are from America. They'd use the VPN, but the one time they forgot to use the VPN, Finance caught it, and they locked all their funds up. That is scary. But you can do it. That's for sure. Sean says, the pools and large miners will always be under the thumb of nodes. If you are declared a bad actor and a threat to the network, you are scrawed. It's interesting. Jane Chow, when is going to get worse? Minor profit is minimal. Electric bills getting more expensive, especially in the EU. Sweet Mary and Joseph, have you seen the prices, the inflation on UK? Let me show you in a bit. Impending dooming industry might see capitulation in Q2, save money by lower Bitcoin and mining. Yeah, I got to agree. Um, there's this great website called Trueflation. I've talked about it many, many times. And what it's great about it is it uses Chainlink as an oracle to pull in real data. 
and we can see real time data as far as inflation, which is this is again, the Fed was telling us that, you know, inflation is only seven, eight percent. And I was looking at true inflation I'm like there's no way it's at, you know, 12 and it's, it's got a lot of different inputs. And of course, now it's doing pretty good. Five point seven three. However, look at UK. That is ridiculous. Twenty percent year over year rate increase. Insane. And where's the most of it coming from? What's this red one? Housing? No. Which is one thing. Util. Yeah, that's it right there. That's insanity. 85% increase. So my heart goes out to people in the UK. Pretty hard to make any profits when everything's being inflated away to oblivion. Jay today says, I missed the bullish part. All I said, Jay, was this. It makes no sense why when things are starting to collapse real estate equities and things like that if we just get some clarity just clarity on what is a commodity what is a currency what is a security then you can have the bigger companies and bigger institutions allocate some of their funds even if you get like one or two percent of somebody like, you know, like, like the Black Rocks or Sovereign Funds or something like that. And they just kind of come in and go, well, let's, we'll allocate a little bit. That's all we need. And that will be huge. It's just getting it there. But no one seems to want to believe me. Nobody, nobody wants to believe me about anything about regulation. Like, I am the moron on the hill who keeps talking about it. And it's like, we don't need regulation, Rob. You don't know what you're talking about. We can just do whatever we want to do. And that's it. That's cool. That's fine. But you understand, like with retail, retail can only push us so far. I need to tell you that. And then, then we go from there. But, you know, some people, I, I, I understand the argument. So it's just I have my argument. That's it. <laughs> What's your thoughts on Seoul? Good time to buy more. I don't know. I don't know. I stopped Dallas House Avenue for a while. I just felt like it was going to collapse with, I still held, I still held on and sell. I mean, I sold stuff in 2021 when I had to buy, when I had to buy more property. But I think right now I wouldn't touch it. I think it's got a longer way downside to go. I also think Bitcoin is more downside to go and Ethereum and Cardano and Polkadot and tomato coin and everything else out there. How's your Spanish going along? I, I was taking these uh, these courses, which you just you just talk in Spanish to somebody for like an hour, two hours a day, and I was doing pretty good. But then I ran into uh, some hard times, uh, and I just couldn't couldn't keep going on. And this is which is why I'm doing this now because I have to keep myself busy and keep my mind off things. <laughs> Rob does loans. You don't want to be. You don't want a loan from me. I'm a real jerk. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Yes, Vicky. Thank you. The Savant Report. Savant Report with Jordan Weir's YouTube channel. Link in the description. So this is a good question. Steve Reynolds. And again, I'm not a miner, but this is what I got. Why would miners be in it for the long haul? 30 plus years. The reward is being halved every four years. How is the network going to stay decentralized? Will the fees go through the roof in the future? So, sorry, I was up late. So you have to understand that, first of all, there's this great graphic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, I just had it. A, B, C, D, halvings. Look at this. This is good. So... We can see here the amount of halvings that are having are happening. This is only going to be our fourth one in, in 2024. So we went from 12.5 to 6.25, and then we went from 6.25, which presently, and well, we're at 6.25, excuse me. Then it goes 24, 28, 32, and it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. So the question then becomes, well. It, why do I keep working the same amount, but I get half of the half of the salary? Wouldn't that suck, huh? You're at the job and like, hey, Rob, you're doing great. You know, I really appreciate all the things you're doing. I need you to keep working the same amount of hours, but we're going to cut your pay in half. 
Have a great weekend. Would you stand for that? Well, not really. However, if you were getting paid in, I don't know, let's just say Bitcoin. <laughs> That's the best example I can think of. You're just you're, you're getting paid in Bitcoin. And of course, when your salary goes down and you only get half a Bitcoin, let's say Bitcoin's worth in May 2020 is worth ten thousand dollars. But then in November 2021, you only get half of that Bitcoin, but it's worth sixty-seven thousand dollars. Now you're getting like thirty thousand. You're like, well, that's not too bad. Actually, I'm doing the same thing, same kind of work, but it's going up. The only way this works, folks, again, the only way this works, and Michael Saylor can will of course tell you that the only thing that you should ever buy in your lifetime is Bitcoin. Because in a hundred years, that's all it's gonna be. You may be right. I don't know. But uh, I like to diversify a little bit, and uh, that's just how I am. You can do whatever you want to, not your dad. So for this one, miners will keep sticking around as long as it is profitable, as long as money flows into it. Let's call a spade a spade. And as the funds go up, people will be happy, and I'll do that. Now, once things start to, start to change and shift, and people start paying for things in Bitcoin through the Lightning Network, which is, I need to do a video on, which is doing quite well and really is uh, increasing adoption. Then the, then the whole dynamic shifts. But right now, it's all about the funds and it's all about how much is in dollars. Some people think of it uh, as Bitcoins uh, per, the, per the value amount because one Bitcoin is still one Bitcoin. However, right now, if you're a Bitcoin miner and you want to keep the lights on, and not have to get a loan from Mike Novogratz. You need money. And how do you get money? You sell Bitcoin for money. And that's how it works. So you can go and you can do loans for your Bitcoin. But you better be damn sure that you have enough of collateral. I did the same thing with Ethereum. And guess what happened? When the rate of Ethereum went down, because that's just what happens in bear markets, you better have a heck of a lot more Ethereum to collateralize your loan. If not, you get liquidated. So again, I, I mean, this is why I harp on these things. It's all a circle to me. And then lastly, will the, will the fees go through the roof in the future? That's a good question. And if we take a look here, there was a great... That's the... If we're using on-chain metrics and we're taking a look at the fees, let me get this out of here, and we're looking at the fees, the average transaction fee in April at the very peak was $62.77. Are you going to pay that for every transaction? Well, I guess it's okay if you're moving billions of dollars, but chances are you're not moving billions of dollars, are you? So if we take a look at this, let's just go through all time. It's amazing when all-time highs hit, everybody wants it. Everybody wants Bitcoin. Here's 2017, December 20th, average transaction fee is $41. Here we are, probably November. Oh, it's April, excuse me. April, $58. Then around here is a dollar, $2, which honestly isn't bad, depending on how much you're actually moving. Compared to like Visa and MasterCard, 1.99% transaction fee. Come on, it's crazy. However, if you want to do that for everything, Buying a cup of coffee. Prime example. It's three dollars. Transaction fee is two twenty-five. I don't want to do that. So the only way this works is Lightning Network gets involved, and it's all off-chain. Well, well, that's essentially what it is. And uh, they pick up the slack on the later end. So it only works if we don't use everything on-chain for Bitcoin, and that's how I see things working. So great question. Yeah, sailor convinced miners not to sell. Trust me, they're selling. Trust me. I'm going to show you why. So there's this great website. It's called CryptoQuant.com. I'm going to sign in. I'm going to use my password, 12345. Hint, that is not my password. Dashboard. 
My dashboard. Dan Digital Asset News, that is me. Minor outflow. Let me blow this up for you. What is this? It's a great question. Minor outflow is the mean amount of coins per transaction sent from the affiliated miners' wallets. We, can, we know which ones are the miners' wallets after, after all this time, just like we're able to identify a Binance wallet, a cold storage wallet, and a Coinbase wallet, and so on and so forth. And you can see that, again, yes, you can take loans out. That's, that's a sailor classic move. We're just going to take loans out against our crypto, and it'll just keep going up forever. It doesn't happen like that. And that's why some Bitcoin mining operations went under. Whether that be a fault of their own or not, doesn't matter. See all these little green spikes? This is when Bitcoin miners move their Bitcoin from one wallet to another. Why would they do that? Probably to sell. Not that this is every time that they're selling, but it's a pretty good bet. Like I can move my, my Bitcoin around. I don't do it too much. The only reason I do it is if I'm going to pay uh, my man in Enardo, Big E, or if I'm transferring from Coinbase to my cold storage wallet. That's pretty much it. That's really all I do. But you can just see that along, along the way. Here's the outflow. That's 6,420 Bitcoins on November 8th. 2,000, 3,000, 1,000. Let's see what's over here. Oh, look at that. Uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, something around there. And that's the price. And of course, just so you know, like when the price goes up, Miners sell. Oh, and also, by the way, let me remind you of something. It's a great website, looking at Bitcoin.com. There's this thing called charts. You know how people always tell you the diamond hands? You got a diamond hand, son. Diamond hands, diamond hands. I swear to God, I swear, I think people say that so they can dump on you. There's this great one called Whale Shadows. I've talked about this before. Let me talk about it again. The indicator shows when Bitcoins that have not moved on change for many years finally move again. And you can break this down. Let me get this out of here. By Bitcoin that hasn't moved for four or five years or five and seven, seven, nine, ten years. Just so you know, if you take a look at this, isn't it amazing how it doesn't really move too much when the price is low? But then when the price goes up, all of a sudden it starts moving. Why does it start moving? Because... If I had Bitcoin sitting around for five years, I just had nothing else to do when I'm with Bitcoin. No, that's not it. I'd probably send it to my exchange so I can dump it on people. And that's that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying what's wrong with it sometimes is people going, you got a diamond hands, diamond hands. And behind the scenes, they're lying right to your face because they're dumping on people, which whatever. That's what it is. That's just four to five years. Now let's take a look at five to seven. Ah, same thing. Price goes up. People dump on you. How about seven to nine years? Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. And then also, but Rob, the old the OGs wouldn't dump on me. They love dumping on you. Kidding me? 10 plus years, price goes up. So <sighs> that's it for that. <laughs> what are these mythical prophets Rob keeps talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, we have to get better at it. We have to be better investors. And crypto golfers got a good point. At some point, just like when we took a look at the uh, historical S and P 500, when things started to collapse, and it was a, it was we didn't hit all time highs for over a decade, there were still many little bull runs within the bear market. So we got to be better at identifying when these little bull runs are happening, and not saying and not getting caught up in the in the idea that hey, guess what, uh, Bitcoin just went up ten percent this week, which means bull run baby and Lambos and moonshots. It's up to us to figure out and go, hmm, maybe this is a good opportunity for me to take some profits along the way. Nothing wrong with that. Let's see. Huh. So, Jane Chess says, Rob, would you ever touch crypto if USA Justice Department made statement that anybody who touches crypto who didn't declare themselves a security will get 10-year jail sentence or $500,000 fine, take risk. Why would anybody take that risk? Like, I would really like crypto to flourish, but I'm not going to pull a Sam Bankman-Fried 
and be like, yeah, just you know, lock me up for 10 years because that's probably what's uh, really good for my family. Nope. Sorry. I don't know if anybody else would disagree with me. Like, Rob, you're, you're a fool. I would definitely take that risk. I think the next, the, 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 the bigger question would be, how would they come to that, that conclusion and to do that? And people, and of course, people right now are screaming and going, Rob, you don't understand. That's right around the corner. Maybe. Maybe. But I'll tell you, if that happens, hmm. actually, I know exactly what I would do, but I can't tell you here. Maybe I'd make a Patreon and tell you exactly what I would have do, but yeah, there's ways around that. All right. Hey, Rob, what happened to the DCA show? Stop doing it. Let's see. Oh, well, thanks. Well, memes on board. I got one. <laughs> you are no jerk. You should have met me like 10 years ago. All right. Oh, wow. James Chow did a pretty good, pretty good thing. No, nobody believed me in the end of 21 when I capitulated, when Powell started increasing interest rate. Never fight the Fed. Sold everything. Just waiting for the drop. Smart. Really good. I didn't do it as much as I should have. I mean, everything's as good as it can be. Bitboy rumor. There's always a rumor about him. Heard rumor that Sam is dumping whatever wallet he can find for because that's maybe the reason why it sold under 10K today. $10 today. I don't know how many can they afford Sam. I heard about that too. I heard uh, one of the wallets that was uh, controlled by Alameda Research all of a sudden became live when Sam got out of prison. <laughs> Uh, David, I, I just, I just see Salonic going, taking more of a slide. This is a great handle. Critical mass gym. That makes me want to go lift weights. That's a great name. If Sam is doing, is doing it, he is in violation of his status. He's in a bail, which means if he's playing around with Alameda funds, gets caught, he'll be li liable for the whole term, but he might know it, which is a good point. And yeah, has anybody been to jail? Yeah, you don't have to put up the whole, the whole amount. Just let you know. Let's see. Marcus says, chance of a new all-time high next cycle are in jeopardy. No one is explaining this idea. No, no, we've talked about this. And even though the four-year cycles have worked in the past, doesn't mean they're going to work again. I personally believe, like, if we don't hit it in 2025, 2026 or 2027, here's the question. I mean, for me, I can hold on. I, I'll be okay waiting you know, another two years and accumulating and taking profits along the way. I'll be all right. But can you do it? Can you hold on for the blow off top? Or can you not? That's the question. I do think it's gonna be different this time because we don't have the leverage that we have or had, and we don't have the shenanigans that was being puppeted by FTX. I really do think that they, they monkeyed around a little bit too much and they stole part of, of our bull run. I, I just, just uh, that's why I take a look at. Yeah, I'd have a chauffeur too. Let's see. I think that's it. Well, good, we do it. Look, guys, that's all the questions that we have. I think we're good for today. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. And uh, that will do it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate every one of you. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.